Hey there, my Sisu peeps, my uh, Sisu hard chargers, my Sisu weirdos, my Sisu family. Uh, my name is Darren DeHarris and I am the founder of Sisu Endurance. Um, and today is the day after Thanksgiving, 2023. And I just wanted to make a short video about the uh, 2023 iron and the 2000, excuse me, 24, and the uh, 24, uh, 2024, 20, Sisu 24. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about something that happened to me recently, which has given me a lot more gratitude in my life, um, which I'll get to after I talk a little bit about the two events. So let's start with the iron and forgive me as I stare over to my notes, but April 26th to the 28th is the 11th uh, Sisu iron. Last year's iron was very long and intense because it was a celebration of 10 years. Uh, I hate saying that one event is harder than the others, but this was definitely by far the longest. This event will not be that. This is more a celebration of life, uh, especially after what happened to me. Um, so it will be challenging. The Sisu Iron has always been one of the most challenging events in California, but um, we want to have fun and we want to hang out and we want to see you guys and we want to... Um, shed some tears and some laughs with you. So uh, keep that in mind. I can tell you right now that I plan to be involved in some of the movements. They are so much fun. And part of the reason they are fun is, you know, as a group, we always collaborate on the ideas and everything. But um, for many years, we have had a DAM, Director of Athlete Morale. And this year's DAM is a very special guest, Matt Wiltshire, who is as OG as they get. Most of you, if you've done an iron, you've done it with him. He's a finisher. He's done every major event you can think of, Mojave Death Race, the Go Rucks, uh, Hurricane Heats, you name it. Matt has been wearing his Sisu shirt and has been out there and he's a part of our community from the very beginning. Nobody gets the message um, or what we try to get across more than him. So we know that um, this will be a very, very special one. Uh, as for the 24, uh, much like Matt is running... Um, well, headlining uh, the iron with the 24 um, Ted Maria my wife and Sydney uh, are the ones who are headlining the 24 right now and uh, moving forward part of that is I'll get to it in just a minute about what happened to me but I really need the help um, and they have some great input so this year we have a hundred mile race which begins at 5 a.m. on July 6 there's a 36 hour cutoff for that 100 miler. It is challenging. There's a lot of elevation gain. Um, it's something I've always wanted to do. I don't know if I'll be there this year. Um, I've competed in the 24 myself, not only as a race director, but I've been in it many times. Um, been fortunate to do well in it. I've always wanted to uh, capture that 100 there. Um, I don't think this is my year, but maybe it's yours, and I hope it is. Um, we're doing the 24-hour race, which is how this all started, at 8 a.m. on July 6. Something new and added and a twist. They want to do something different. So we have a night dash, which is a 30K. And that will start at 9 p.m., okay? Uh, it goes to 1 a.m. That's July 6. In the morning, then, there will be a 21K for those that want to do it at 7 a.m., okay? And it ends at 11 a.m., and that's on July 7th. You can do both for a special Sisu Trail Challenge if you'd like. So you have those options and you have the 24 hour, as many miles as you want. You can come and do as little or as much as you'd like and you have the 100 mile option. Keep in mind the 24 is for everyone. We don't charge you to camp. We want you to come out and uh, have fun. We want you to bring the entire family. We want you to bring your crew. Um, we are not going to sit here and dictate how you race. That is up to you. Okay, so, uh, you know, people get all caught up and this person helped this person and that, that, that. Look, the, the 24 is for everyone. We just want to hang out and we want to challenge you. We expect honor and integrity and we expect you to challenge yourself. Most people don't break that. So we don't have to um, get crazy about crew or anything like that. Um, with Thanksgiving and with everything that's happened to me personally, which I'm going to get to right now, um, we don't ever give discount codes because we only charge enough to put on our events. It has never been a for-profit uh, thing. We, at the end, uh, we all lose money on these events. And I'm not saying that, I'm only saying that because it's the truth. We don't make money at this. The people who put it on, they fly in from all over the country and they spend more time than you can imagine planning and getting this thing together. And we do it because we love it. 
But we are going to offer a code until the new year, and that is Sisu Strong. And you can register on Sisu, S-I-S-U dash endurance.com. I encourage you to use the code, register a friend. Let's get together. Okay. Um, with that, I want to kind of explain something that happened to me recently. So I am 50 years young. Um, I've been an athlete my entire life. Um, started skateboarding, then got into wrestling. I was coaching wrestling. I was doing endurance events, triathlons, um, uh, marathons, then ultras, then Googling world's most difficult race. And that's where I spent about a decade of my time trying to find the most challenging races I could, all while coaching wrestling. And I mean, I couldn't have been more concerned with my overall fitness. Um, it was really my identity has been and who I am and I take great pride in it. So I never thought that I would ever get sick. Um, while coaching recently, a couple of weeks back in Las Vegas in a casino, um, my arms started getting tingly. I started sweating. My wrestler said I was pale white. Um, my chest just, it was tough. Um, so I was having a heart attack. I had no reference point for what a heart attack was and I was trying to hide it from my athletes and parents. I just thought my body was spazzing out and uh, I would get through it. And, you know, I've always been taught to be a tough guy. So um, <clears throat> that's what I tried to do. I was eight, I laid on the floor for a while in the middle of a casino <laughs> in a corner. People just walked over me. <laughs> it was wild. And I got over to an area where um, a lot of my athletes and their parents, um, and people I consider family were, and um, they realized immediately what was going on. Um, as I tried to fight them and tell them that I would be fine, I would get up and drive home soon, don't worry. It was at that point, <clears throat> I'm going to only tell you one part of the story because I, I feel it's important for everybody out there. Um, I think I went out. It was, uh, I was laying on the ground and one of the parents, um, she... Um, she said I passed out, but see, prior to that, I started being filled with this angst and anxiety that I just can't explain, and it was super overwhelming. And then it was as if a warm blanket came over me, and all the pain went away, and everything was peaceful and warm and quiet and nice. And it would have been much easier to just stay with the quiet. And... uh yeah, it's hard. At that moment, uh, I started thinking about things I hadn't done. I immediately thought about work, of all things. And um, I started thinking about my family and you guys and things that I wanted to do myself. And it was all of a sudden <gasps> that moment. And I looked up and I was surrounded by um, paramedics, 911, people I care and love about. And uh, I went to the hospital and I was there for... I don't know, four days or something. It was hard to keep track of what was going on. Um, they thought everything was fine. They said I was way too fit. There's no way I had a heart attack. They literally left me in a waiting room for days. My wife was super upset. I was in the uh, emergency room for like 12 hours, just sitting there, unattached to anything because they said I'm way too fit. I'm way too healthy. Um, there's no way this happened to you. It wasn't until I did a stress test. And then they said, you're again, you're way too fit. We're going to send you home. I literally was in my clothes in the hospital for two days until I requested a hospital gown. They were like that unconcerned with me. And then it wasn't until that stress test, they told me I was going home. And finally, a cardiologist came in. He said, you're not going home and we're going to have a procedure right now. Um, my artery was 99% closed. I had a widow maker. My doctor said there was less than a 10% chance of my survival um, and that I was very fortunate. Um, they went in and through here and put a stent in and all of a sudden <gasps> I can breathe again. For the last couple years, really since COVID, um, I've been struggling. And those of you that have been up with me, you've probably thought, man, Darren got old or he's uh, just a puss or whatever it is. It was literally because my arteries were blocked um, and I couldn't breathe and I didn't understand that. Um, and I was upset at myself and I started getting away from events because I thought I was out of shape and I never wanted to be less than what I was yesterday. And that was so hard for me to handle. And I would tell my friends all the time, ah, oh, we're gonna train and I wanna do an event with you. And in the back of my mind, I kept thinking, oh, you old man, you're so wishful thinking. And it's not that I'm old. It's that I simply, I have coronary artery disease. And um, 
I couldn't get blood flow through to my heart, and that's all it was. No doctor, no RN, no cardiologist can explain why this has happened to me. I've checked none of the boxes. Again, I just going to tell you it happened around the time the COVID and when I started getting all shot up with vaccines and stuff and I, I don't know what happened um, I don't always eat the best but I don't eat like obviously I'm an athlete so you know um, I don't smoke I don't drink um, I work out all the time um, so now life has changed right um, I am beyond grateful for every little thing in my life one of the first things I did when I got home I have a vegetable garden in the back and I just made myself a salad with my organic vegetables. And it was the most vibrant, lush salad I'd ever had in my life. And that's where I'm at because I shook hands with Jesus. And he told me, not right now, son. So uh, I made it back. And I don't want to lose you guys. I know time's gotten away from us. I know COVID's taken away a lot from us. I know some of us aren't in the shape that we used to be in or we've gotten older or they're new people and they don't know if they can do some of this crazy stuff. Listen, nothing Sisu's ever done, even though we have the reputation as the guys in black with skulls. We've just been about pushing our own boundaries. It hasn't been about being the coolest, strongest, toughest guy out there. I, I find that obnoxious. Um, that's why we have the Ironman Award, where it's presented by all the athletes vote rather than the strongest person out there. Sisu is about pushing your limits. It's about never forgetting that tomorrow isn't promised. Don't forget that because it's not. Let's get together one more time. I want to see you guys. Let's go out and, uh, and have some fun and battle some mountains. I love you all. I'm grateful beyond measure, and I'll see you soon.